Hi there. Every week I get Facebook private messages from Christian women, emails from men who feel scared and trapped and hopeless and helpless because their most intimate relationship is abusive, either verbally, physically, economically, sexually, spiritually, or all of the above. And the Bible has things to say about the way we treat people. And as Christians, we should all strive to be biblically wise in how we handle these difficult and painful family situations. So in this video, I want to share with you five biblical principles that will guide your thinking about abuse. And first, abuse is always sin, always sin. The scriptures are clear, abuse of any kind and abuse of authority or power, especially even God-given legitimate authority, is always sinful. Abuse of speech, behavior, is never an acceptable way to communicate. Second, the Bible teaches that abuse is never an appropriate response when you're provoked. And in working with individuals who have been abusive, they often blame you for the way they acted. It's your fault I did that. This can be especially tricky when trying to counsel couples because there's no perfect person and victims of abuse aren't sinless. However, I wanna be really clear. Abusive behavior and speech is never justified, even if you are provoked, because people provoke us all the time. Where we're still responsible for our own responses and what comes out of our mouth or how we use our hands. Third, biblical headship does not entitle a husband to get his own way or make all the family decisions or to remove his wife's right to make a choice or have a voice. And at the heart of most domestic abuse is a sinful use of power to gain control over another person. Biblical headship is described as sacrificial servanthood, not unlimited authority or power. And so let's not confuse terms. When a husband demands his own way or tries to dominate his wife or bully her into submission, it's not called biblical headship. It's called selfishness and abuse of power. And God rebuked the leaders of Israel for their self-centered and abusive shepherding of God's flock. Fourth, unrepentant sin always damages relationships and sometimes even people. Sin also separates us from our relationship with God and from one another. It is unrealistic and unbiblical to believe that someone can continue healthy fellowship with someone else who repeatedly sins against them when there's no repentance and no change. They are impacted in every way, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And last, it's God's purpose to deliver the abused. As Christians, we're to be champions of the oppressed, not defenders of the oppressor. God hates abuse of power and the sin of injustice. So what's next? How should we respond when we know abuse is happening to someone we know or love, or maybe even to ourselves? In our next video, I'm gonna give you some steps that God tells you how to overcome evil with good.